Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. So I think as John has said, as, uh, as the range said here, uh, you've got this legendary status. But let's say there's some folks out there who don't know who you are, Rhonda. Can you explain like who you are, what your background is? how you came uh, to be here in the gun community, and obviously known by so many people in the gun community um, as someone who stood up for the Second Amendment. If you could just break that down for us here. Absolutely, Hank. I'm Rhonda Ezell. I was the lead plaintiff in Ezell versus the City of Chicago, took on the City of Chicago for the right to build gun ranges. I am also the president and co-founder of Chicago Guns Matter. And what we wanted to do is you know, we took on, we were the plaintiffs that took on this, the political powers to be to restore gun rights in the city of Chicago. We were the last state in the United States of America to get concealed carry. So we know that the city of Chicago is very corrupt. We were fighting the machine and then we won. It, it took for Otis McDonald, along with David and Colleen Lawson, to take on the city of Chicago for the right to own a gun in the home. Mm -hmm. You know, they had a, a total ban on firearm ownership. You can't have a gun. And that had been in place for, for over three decades. So, you know, coming upon that, I saw that on the news. I said, okay, I'm going to get involved. I'm going to exercise my right. Because I was dealing with a situation where people had tried to break into my home. And so, you know, I wasn't going for that. And mm -hmm. so I, you know, started to comply and traveled outside of the city to do so. city said, hey, you want to get a Chicago firearm permit at the time? That's what it was when Mr. McDonald won his case. They said, you have to have a class and you have to have some range training. But at the same time, they prohibited gun ranges. That's where I found myself traveling outside of the city to comply with the new ordinance. Then I came back and I broke it down to my state organization, which is the Illinois State Rifle Association, which I'm a lifetime member of. And I said, look, guys, these are the things that I had to go through. And it was very significant because I had just lost my health. I was dealing with getting off life support, learning how to walk again. And it was tough for me to travel to even get to that destination. Mm -hmm. And so when I got back, I said, look, this is what happened. So they checked it out. They checked out the information and they said, look, your rights have been violated. Denver, Chicago was born. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. So if we could just go back here for a second, because um, I believe, uh, you know, you, you were talking about Otis McDonald. Can we just uh, break down real quick who Otis McDonald is for the folks out there? Absolutely. Like, in including Otis me that doesn't know the, you know, I don't feel like oh, I know the full story of Otis McDonald either. Go ahead. You know, Otis McDonald is a, a hero. He's an American hero. He's a father. He's a uh, veteran. He took on the city of Chicago because he was having some issues in his neighborhood with the gangbangers. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, in Chicago, these guys are rough. They want to be on your property. They want to, you know, do all the things that standing in front of your place or, you know, aggravating people. And Mr. McDonald, he wasn't going for that. So mm -hmm. he decided to sue the city of Chicago for the right to own a gun. You know, he's worked in this city. He's paid taxes in the city. He's far from this country. He's a great father. He's a great husband. He's a great, you know, he's a great man. And, and to all of us, he's a, an American hero. Mm -hmm. And so once he won that right, and, and he struck that right down, it was a Supreme Court victory. This case was monumental. So, so at that speak. so it, at that time in Chicago, victory. at that time in Chicago, with, like, was it like within the city of Chicago, you couldn't have a firearm within the home? What was going on there? You couldn't, you couldn't have a firearm, period. You couldn't have a firearm, because, period, okay. Because back in like in the mid 80s, mm -hmm. at one point in time, they had something in place where you could own a gun. But mm -hmm. when it expired, they never put another uh, registry in place for people to renew their license. And okay. this was done by one of the most corrupt aldermen in city council, who's mm -hmm. now being indicted, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So mm -hmm. this is what we're dealing with. So we took on, uh, we had Mike Madigan, who has been running this state with an iron fence for over mm -hmm. 50 years, uh, the political machine with the dailies, Rahm Emanuel, et cetera. So, yeah, you know, lots of corruption in Chicago. Are, absolutely, and mm -hmm. that's what people don't understand. When we say we were the last state to get concealed carry and we went from a total ban on firearm ownership to shall issue concealed carry. Mm -hmm. I, I think I beg to differ about Chicago having the most strictest gun rules, the mm -hmm. gun laws. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because we, we came a long way. 
Yeah, absolutely. Like there's so there's so much to unpack here, John. I don't know if there was something, if there was a point that you wanted to, was there something you wanted to... Uh... I just wanted to say mm-hmm. uh, uh, McDonald is a legend in 2A history. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, absolutely. unfortunately, he passed, right? I think he passed in uh, absolutely. 2014. Mr. McDonald passed away. He mm-hmm. was not able to get his concealed carry license. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the reasons that I stand strong when I tell people, stop talking negative about the city of Chicago, especially if you live here. If you are a gun owner and you have a right to have a gun in the home or you are exercising your right to carry concealed, Mr. McDonald is a trailblazer. If it wasn't for him putting his life on the line and the life of his family and loved ones to go up against the political powers to be, none of us mm-hmm. would have a firearm in our possession at this time because he started it all. Right. Yeah. And I hate to hear people continuously badger the city of Chicago and we're not even in the top 10 for crime in the nation, you know. So oh, okay. All right. They, they have to do their homework. All right. So there's some stuff we have to get into with Chicago. I mean, I, I knock Chicago all the time. So, I mean, if you, you know, you could definitely spank me, but I, I know I do it. We all, I, I think Chicago is like an easy That's target for everybody a Everybody does it. Yeah. It's, it's an easy target because mm-hmm. politically, they're always bickering back and forth with someone. Right. So it makes us the target. Yeah, and, but and there's I so much it. corruption. There's all these different Absolutely. things going on in Chicago. We just have like, you know, Absolutely. it's yeah. Chicago is just one of those places. It's like how Florida has Florida, man. We try yeah. to own it. We try to own it. It's not. It's not necessarily a good thing, but we try to own it. I think there are things going on in Chicago now. One of the things is that uh, I, I I hear from time to time there's people who say. You know, how come there's not uh, more black people out there standing up for the Second Amendment in America? And I think uh, with Otis McDonald and then yourself, you know, a prime examples of, of black people in America who are fighting for the Second Amendment, right? Absolutely. That was, and that was the main reason we created Chicago Guns Matter. Mm-hmm. Because in the 2 way community, we are household names. You would hear Ezel versus Chicago or McDonald versus Chicago Mm -hmm. through litigation. Mm -hmm. And that's how it was processed. I wanted to make sure that we put faces to the cases so that we could humanize the cases. Mm -hmm. We were everyday working uh, mom and dads, grandparents that went to work every day, came home Mm -hmm. and decided we wanted to stand up and and fight for our rights. So when I hear that, oh, the black community is not involved and why black people don't exercise that, we are. We just need to be put out in the forefront more. Mm-hmm. Oh yes, we. I well, mean, so there's a lot of people out there that it's not convenient. I think to have your faces out there, right? No. Yeah. Well, they don't want to mm-hmm. put it. Absolutely. Let mm-hmm. me say yes, because in Chicago, once again, you're dealing with the corruption. Mm-hmm. So to literally say I'm a gun owner, people still afraid that they may end up having a disagreement with law enforcement. You have to remember, the city of Chicago has never had a great communication relationship with law enforcement. Mm-hmm. And this goes back from the days of Al Capone. Mm-hmm. So when you don't have this, it, but it was instilled by Mary Manuel, who told those police officers he didn't care who had a concealed carry license, treat them all the same, which was as criminals. Mm-hmm. We had a superintendent before who stated that once we won those lawsuits that he instructed his police department to shoot concealed carry holders. And that came from Gary McCarthy. And, Mm -hmm. you know, when he showed his face to try to run for mayor, I was out just flabbergasted. Like, Mm -hmm. what? Yeah, yeah. This is is one of the, there's, uh, first of all, I mean, Chicago is uh, one of the oldest cities in America. I don't know where the ranking, I don't know where the ranking stands on. Like, what's the, what's the oldest city, John? Do you know? What's the... the... The oldest city in America. Uh, yeah, I know Chicago's not the oldest, but it's it's pretty it's pretty old city. There's a lot of history going on there in Chicago, and we hear about it a lot in the news. And I think this is why it has like a little bit of a bad reputation. You know, we hear every weekend there's all these right. deaths. You know, we hear all this stuff. And I think uh, from this is from my point of view, right? And it would be great if you can mm-hmm. enlighten us on this. You still live in Chicago, right? Absolutely. Okay, you like born and bred in Chicago, also, I think. Absolutely. Okay. So, like, one of the things, you know, um, that people hear out there is, like, this place is a war zone. 
You know, there's lots of uh, gangs out there. It's very tough for people to to uh, get that under control. I think you even mentioned that when you were talking about Otis McDonald, that there were these gangs. He wanted to be able to defend himself. And we see this a lot. There's lots of uh, hardworking, uh, good people in America in lots of places. Lots of times it's the inner city that do not have the ability to fight back or push back against crime that's there and this is to me the the major thing that we reason why we have the second amendment for be able for people to be able to provide their own security for themselves and their family members right for sure Mm -hmm. what's going on here is we see a lot of gang violence Mm -hmm. and when it comes down to regular everyday people if if for some reason these people are into your space, then they're probably nine times out of 10 trying to rob you for something Mm -hmm. that they see you have or something that they want. But when it comes to the violence itself, this is, it's not gun violence. That's just a terminology made up by the anti-gunners. This is gang related. Someone will kill an individual and then of course they're gonna go back and, and to break it down to the people that don't understand, they want to get their lick back. Now that may sound horrible to say it, but how else can I break it down to the American people to understand? When a gang member kills someone, Mm -hmm. they're going to retaliate. Then there's going to be another retaliation, and Mm -hmm. it's going to carry on. Mm -hmm. But the reason you see them saying about gun ownership is because when it's portrayed on the news through the media, it's promoted as gun violence, which means typically that's to mentally manipulate the general Mm -hmm. public to think and hone in on the tool mm-hmm. instead of the individual responsible for the crime. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. 100%. So, I mean, yeah. so if every day you see 20 shot, four mm-hmm. fatal, or 30 shot, six fatal, mm-hmm. so on and so forth, and they keep saying gun control, gun control, gun control, well, these are the same racist gun control measures that's been in place since we were freed of slavery. Mm-hmm. But yet, we doing all this margin for racial equality and no one has brought it up yet to end these racist gun control measures. But here we are. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, John, did you, was there something, um, I know I saw, I saw you looking up stuff. What did you want to say? No, I wasn't. Somebody was texting me. No, I was going to answer a question that you Mm -hmm. asked me that you, instead of letting me answer, you just like jumped away, but that's okay. Yeah. This is how we do it here, John. This is how we do it here. You got, you (laughs) got to jump in, man. You got to jump in. Yeah. No, I'm not used you can't to be polite. Jumping in. I, I, I'm real polite. I yeah. have to wait. Trust me, I have seen John. I have seen John all fired up and jumping in. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Jump in, John. Rhonda said, uh, "No one's do. No one's uh, speaking up against uh, racist gun control." And mm-hmm. I want to correct her. Mm-hmm. I think uh, she's speaking up against racist gun control. And there's other people out there. Like uh, Maj Sore speaking up against gun control. And mm-hmm. I think these people need to have their voices mm-hmm. elevated, especially Rhonda's, mm-hmm. uh, to a national stage and get in front of people. Well, uh, let me jump in and interject right quick because I'm not talking about me, Maj, Antonia, us that's in the Tway community. I'm talking mm-hmm. about what we're being fed through the media through mm-hmm. these marches and protests that's yeah. telling us that Black Lives Matter. Who is running those? those marches and those protests. Those are the people I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about our inner circle. Right. Yeah, we but, do it all the time and yeah, we do yeah. it together. Yeah, it's We're not it, it's for the it's, same common cause. It when I say they're not fighting for racial gun control measures to be taken off the book, I'm talking about the political powers to be mm-hmm. that has held office for 10, 20, 30, 40 years that are locking arms with these people, marching with them, mm-hmm. lying in their faces just a little bit longer to stay in office those are the people that i'm talking about i'm not talking about maj and i'm not talking about any Mm -hmm. other individual within the two-way community because that's our job yeah absolutely i think i i think i understand that i think obviously you know what john i mean you know i think you're both right here and i think the overall thing it's like if a tree falls in the forest and no one's there to hear it does it make a sound um, the 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 person to be there to hear it or amplify this or project this message would be the media in general, which refuses to recognize people like Rhonda yeah. or Maj or Kevin Dixie or all, all the guys who are out there fighting right. this stuff all the time. Absolutely. Well, what, I, what I'm trying to say is we, we need to find a way to get you guys in front of the media. 
That's they don't. They don't want to talk I'm, to us, though. They don't. They ignore I, us purpose, purposely. Did I not tell you that? Did not tell I'm you not, they don't want to talk to us? Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm not saying that's the answer. I'm just saying we got to figure out a way to. No, do you're it. right. You're you're 100 percent right. What, what, what I would like to do mm -hmm. is I would like for some of these gun manufacturers or ammunition manufacturers mm -hmm. and and makers of whatever accessory that's 2A. Mm -hmm. I know you have professional shooters that do this. I, I get that. I'm saying if we're going to promote black firearm ownership on another level where we could reach the people because you have to reach them here. You can mm -hmm. write a long story mm -hmm. and post it. They're not going to read it. They may scam it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They'll, maybe they'll look at the headline. Maybe. Put a board like, right. If you're going to get their attention, put up a billboard. Mm -hmm. Do some marketing promoting. Mm -hmm. Put something on the bus. Put something on the newsstand. Mm -hmm. Make it normal. We know we're doing it, but we're not being seen and not being heard mm -hmm. to the point where we can grasp the, the general public in a way where they're driving down the expressway or a highway and they go, whoa. Was that a black family, like, mm -hmm. or at a bus station, and they see a, a a black gun owner? Yeah. You know, so I'm just saying, let's find a way to network. Let's find a way to put ourselves out there, other than social media, because mm -hmm. that is what's going to ring the bell. Yeah, absolutely. Because it resonates better than words. Yeah, well, you're giving me ideas. What's it's a visual out there? What's that, John? She's giving me ideas. Oh, yes, she's fired up. She's fired up. It's me. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's me. No, I'm just teasing. Listen. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.